Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Today we have <laughs> one of probably the most requested videos for me to do ever. And that is, in general, a video about Jaclyn Hill and her brands. Now, if there is one person in the whole world who can convince me that having multiple failed business launches is like a good sales tactic or a sales tactic people use, it is Jaclyn Hill. How can possibly every single brand someone launch be tied to some kind of drama or have some kind of drama going on? How can it always have some kind of controversy, like morally corrupt drama happening? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna fill you in a little bit. We're gonna look at all of Jaclyn Hill's brand launches. Now she did recently release a video saying that she is shutting down all her brands, which I think is probably best for everyone. Before we get into it, do consider subscribing and go ahead and subscribe to my reaction channel, which is just reactionary content. Um, I'll leave it down below in the description box here on the screen and also um, a pinned comment. So go and subscribe over there. Let's start with the main one, shall we? Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. If you aren't familiar, Jaclyn Hill announced her makeup brand on YouTube on the 23rd of May, 2019. She released a YouTube video where she seems pretty excited as he would be if you were releasing your own brand and announced it to the world, you know, after being an influencer for so long on YouTube, it might be quite like a goal for some people to get that brand out there, especially after you've had as many collaborations with other brands as much as Jaclyn Hill had had in the past. And she speaks about how she has, um, how long she's wanted her own makeup brand for, like that was the goal. She talks about how she used to work in a department store on one and, you know, mix things together and, um, which sounds really familiar. Is that the Two-Faced guy who said that? And, you know, think, oh, you know, if I had my own brand, I could do this. And she also mentions as well how it's completely her own brand. She's the CEO, the founder, and it's kind of like a family-run business, which is ultimately untrue, which we will touch on. But overall, this brand launch is her life goal. It is her dream come true. And here we are on launch day. Let me tell, let me just tell you, right, I watched the whole launch video in researching this video. And let me just tell you, with today's retention rate, it wouldn't do so well. I'll say that, it wouldn't do so well. I cannot believe that I'm filming this video right now. Like, I have no words. I don't even know how to do a proper intro. But oh my god, I'm actually filming this video right now! Like, ah! I have a memory that stands out to me in 2015 in my shower, in my old condo. Remember washing my hair out loud, like reciting what I was going to say in this video. Because I thought that this brand was gonna launch. Working at the Mac counter, I remember exactly where I was standing. I remember the shoes I was wearing. I remember standing there in the front of Woodfield Mall Mac store holding a lipstick, saying to myself, one day, I wanna have a brand of my own. Because it's my brand and it literally has my name on it. I was encouraged by so many people to change the name of my brand, not put my name on it, call it, you know, blah, 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 by Jaclyn Hill. That way if I wanna sell it, or that way if a product isn't that good, it's not my name that takes responsibility, right? And I'm just like, no, that's not my journey for my brand. My name is on these products and on every box and the website and the Instagram and the socials for a reason because these are my products that I am creating, I am putting my heart and soul to. Nothing is ever gonna launch or be released that I personally have not worn, tested, and love. And I can say that I am launching a brand that I am so proud to be the owner of, I cannot even begin to tell you. Like I look at my brand and my future launches and the launch that I'm having on the 30th of, the, 30th of this month, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words, and I just cannot believe how privileged I am for this to be my product. Like I am so proud of myself and you guys know I'm so hard on myself. I'm such a perfectionist and I'm honestly so mean to myself that for me to say that, it's such a big deal. Like I am so proud. She also talks about how she um, saved money basically to start her own brand. I think she said around $80,000 to start her own brand and she'll go into places, you know, that can make this possible for her and they'll basically laugh her out of a room because it wasn't enough money or whatever. Um, which again, we know isn't true. <laughs> now we know, but finally she's come up with this brand herself. So these lipsticks launch, right? Let's just, let's just talk about it. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the very hairy elephant. Hairy, fluffy, 
moldy, slimy lipstick. People start to receive their orders. Bear in mind, they, these weren't like extremely affordable lipsticks. In my opinion, they were quite pricey. Now that we know they were just Morphe lipsticks, but they started to arrive like full on broken. Like somebody had taken them out, snapped and put it back in the case. They were arriving melted, covered in small hairs, small fibers, and also like, balls off like stuff, just balls off like crap in the lipstick, right? Not how you would expect to receive your new item that you just ordered and had paid good money for. So some people reported having the product arrive broken, but some people also reported that, that the lipstick had broke literally after the first use, like full on just snapped. And as I said, people were saying that the lipstick seemed melted on delivery. I have received product from overseas, from many different places, lipsticks especially, that haven't been affected by heat, by weather, going through some hot places too. So for that to be an, an issue, like logistically, that's not, that's not good, that's not good. And people were kind of like using the excuse of being like, oh, it's summertime, it's hot everywhere. Of course they're gonna arrive melted. No, that's not, you shouldn't order a product and of course it's going to arrive melted. You think there's stores that are gonna sell this product? receiving all these melted lipsticks and being like, that's life, this is what we're gonna sell, doesn't happen. And of course, some people started sharing online that their lipsticks were arriving with something a little bit extra, a little bit extra there for you, for your money. White fuzz and little, little black dots, which I think just look like air bubbles. So on Twitter, there were like images that described the lipstick as contaminated. These pictures started circulating around everywhere. And then people started sharing their pictures of like the small white hairs on these lipsticks, but also as well, well, people were saying that the lipstick was kind of gritty on texture, like almost like sand, like while applying the lipstick, which isn't ideal for a lipstick. You want it to be nice and smooth, right? Unless it's exfoliating, but you wash that off afterwards. Responding to these complaints, Jacqueline Hill um, posted this tweet saying that she hadn't seen anyone else complaining about the lipstick. And then she did also mention that the per one of the people complaining might have compromised their own lipstick by using it on top of another product. There's a whole other drama involved in this as well. This video right here, I did, um, I spoke about Jaclyn Hill's reaction to all these tweets, you know, and her reaction, it wasn't good, it wasn't good. So check that out, I'll leave it li um, linked below as well for you. So she basically eventually encouraged all her followers to notify her if they had received 40 lipsticks, 40 products. She didn't have to look far for this proof. This is what puzzles me because you could literally type Jaclyn Hill lipsticks into Google at this point, into Twitter, and nothing but, into YouTube even, and nothing but the complaints about these lipsticks would come up. If she was any way involved with this brand at this point, which of course she would have been in terms of reviews, she would have seen it, no doubt. You couldn't avoid it, you could not avoid it. And as a controversy grew with these lipsticks, people were wondering why some influencers weren't actually even talking about the lipsticks altogether when they had focused on her products in the past, her collaborations, Morphe, Becca, they had openly talked about it. A lot of brands don't do this anymore, but they used to send out PR before the product would launch so that influencers would try it on and then get people excited and hyped up for the actual release date. Not a lot of people do that now, Jacqueline claimed that there was an issue that delayed them, but speculation was that she didn't want to send out these faulty lipsticks to these influencers, because could you imagine? It would be millions of people seeing this issue with these lipsticks. One person who really touched on these lipsticks and kind of actually, for me, brought it to a lot of people's attention was Raw Beauty Chrissy with her video looking at her lipsticks she purchased herself. But when I opened my Jaclyn lipsticks today, I noticed so many issues and I was immediately shocked. I did not expect it. I did not see this coming. Some of these lipsticks are full of hair, lint, fuzz. Some of the lipsticks, I will say, look just fine. Some of them look hideous. I'm going to insert some photos of the lipsticks that I'm talking about and you'll see immediately that I am not exaggerating. First I was like people are being a little nitpicky and now I'm like okay I don't know if I have I have over, ever opened a lipstick with like fuzzes on it. But it gets worse though. People were saying that these lipsticks were giving them like swollen lips and bumps and rashes and cold sores. Everything went wrong with this lipstick launch. There was even a petition on change.org to have Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics recall these lipsticks. It got over 29,000 signatures. So you can tell people were pretty pissed about it. They, they wanted change to happen. So days later, Jaclyn did make an apology video and she, she apologized. She said she's really sorry that people had re received these faulty lipsticks, but then went on to ensure people that they were safe to use. 
but they have like shards of metal in them, some of them, like really spiky bits. I don't think they could be considered safe to you as for what they are on the lips, scratching up the lips swallowing balls of metal. You know what I mean? She said, I'm so, so sorry that any of you are experiencing anything less than absolute perfection from my first launch. I will do whatever it takes to make it up to you. I will send you a brand new lipstick. I will pay for it myself. I will give you a full refund. And this is where the famous like lab glove um, situation comes from where she was saying the white fibers were from people using white furry gloves, not furry, like hairy, but you know, fibers from the gloves in the lab and that the black dots were just oxygen bubbles, which they do actually just look like oxygen bubbles. That's what I thought they were when I saw them too. But people kind of weren't convinced as well with this whole refund situation. These lipsticks were sold out. So how were you going to replace them? You know what I mean? People still wanted them for some reason. People still were like, yeah, I need, I want that lipstick, hair or not. Some people did actually get replacements for these lipsticks, but guess what, guess what? They also arrived with those black dots in. So what was the point? Jacqueline Hill recently also kind of released a pretty tone deaf TikTok where she's doing her lipstick or something. And it says, point of view, you're still using Jacqueline Hill's contaminated, in quotes, lipstick four years, years later. This isn't a point of, this isn't how you use point of view. This, this will be point of view. You watch Jacqueline Hill, cause we're, that's our point of view. If she was in a mirror, a big mirror, that would be her point of view. That's not how we use point of view. Anyway, <laughs> in the caption as well, she put, I get a warm fuzzy feeling every time. Cause people were talking about the white fuzzies and the lipstick. And of course people were like pretty pissed off. They were like, this isn't funny. Like people spent money on products that were actually contaminated. There's no quotes, c quote contaminated about it. There's no allegedly about it. They were, and you're like, I'm still using my later. The most annoying thing for me about this is, is, is there's proof online. There's no, maybe if they were contaminated, there's physical proof. There's videos, pictures, everything online. There's no doubt about it, that it's factual. It's factual, there's evidence. You know what I mean? Your lipsticks, Jacqueline, were in fact contaminated. What's alleged about that fact? What is alleged about that fact? Did I miss something here? Was everyone making it up or? However, it turns out, like I was saying earlier, let's round up this brand because it's, it's going away anyway. It turns out that this brand wasn't owned by her at all. She wasn't the CEO, she wasn't the founder. She actually had nothing to do with it other than her name being on it and perhaps helping with the products, choose the products. It's not her brand. It was owned by Morphe, former brands, which is now closing down. Well, she she did a video recently talking about how she's gonna um, close down the, the next two brands we're gonna talk about. Didn't mention Jaclyn Hill products, but has in recent posts mentioned that Jaclyn Hill products are going away. So let's talk about Jaclyn Roxanne. Now Jaclyn Roxanne is Jaclyn Hill's jewelry brand, right? This launched on the 20th of October, 2021. Of course, in the video, um, title introducing Jacqueline Roxanne, where she describes a brand as one of the most authentic things she could do for herself other than this beauty brand. One thing I noticed about, about this launch, the jewelry launch and the cosmetic launch of a makeup brand, was she's like, you guys, you know, I used to live in an apartment and you, you know, now I have a bigger house. It's like, what's that got to do with anything? What's that, what's, I know it's part of your journey, but that's what your followers have given you the money to do that. So let's not, what's it got to do with jewelry? <laughs> okay, so she launched with 28 pieces. That's quite a lot. Is that true? I don't know anything about jewelry. I'm not really into it. Um, but they look fine. They look pe like staple pieces of jewelry, hoop earrings, chain necklace, you know, like like they look like staples. Nothing unique though, nothing like stand out, which way like, oh my God. Um, talking, of, talking about not being unique, apparently she allegedly stole a design, two designs actually. Jacqueline was called out for copying a necklace design from a brand called Lana Jewelry. Um, their Blake necklace design. Now, Lana started to make posts calling it the original and calling Jacqueline's the AliExpress version. Ouchies, that's, that's harsh. So basically they're saying Jacqueline stole this design from this jewelry creator. Jacqueline's response was this. I want to address some comments I've seen regarding my recent jewelry launch. 
I love Lana's fine jewelry and I have been wearing the brand for years. So I have nothing but respect for her as a business owner and someone I've always supported. My designer and I started working on the Larry, Larry, I wanna say necklace after we first launched the disc style chain in my trifecta and stacked coin pieces. That was like a whole other language to me. I love the style so much that we expanded to a variety of pieces for this new collection, including a lariat necklace that many jewelry brands make. It's hurtful to see some comments claiming the idea was stolen when there are clear differences in the design. And I consider myself close with Lana Jewelry. Jacqueline Roxanne is a fashion jewelry line inspired by my personal collection and is intentionally different from others. Hope it clears up some of the questions coming I've um, been seeing. Listen, if you <laughs> if your jewelry brand is inspired by your own collect by your own pieces, you're being inspired by other people's pieces. Just because it's your own stuff that you purchase, it doesn't mean it's your designs. And that's like me buying loads of clothes and being like, I want to make a fashion brand inspired by all these pieces of clothes. Like it's, that, then it's, it, you're, it, you're calling yourself out. You just contradicted yourself there. But what didn't help with this was the design that she's been accused of stealing was one that she's worn many times before, physically in pictures as well. So it isn't an issue of, oh my God, I didn't know it existed. Like it's completely different. It's very much similar. It's the same shape. Actual chain itself is a little bit different, but it's, it's like, you know, doing a McDonald's M and being like, oh yeah, but the, but the M's like cursive. Like it, it's like it's the same, but not. And the two, the two items do look very, very similar. The obvious difference is of course, like the color and the chain is slightly different, but it's the same necklace, same shape and everything. Even the way it sits is very, it's the same. But there's another, there's another copy in, in this launch, in this whole brand, Jacqueline Roxanne, whatever it's called. But she actually featured this, necklace that she is being accused of copying in a previous, before her jewelry brand, in a previous like full favorites video. Her version of this is the Solitaire. It's like a paperclip chain necklace with a diamond on the end. Not sure that's, it's definitely not a real diamond, but we'll call it a diamond. Um, the only difference between this and and the original version. So, so people called her out for this because this was a very popular design um, from Melinda Maria Jewelry, um, a brand that's been worn by many famous people. The reason Jacqueline saw this in the first place was because she saw it on Kim Kardashian um, and, and she had it in her full favorites video in 2020. They are suspiciously similar, excluding one like a link holding the diamond um, on, but that's that's like one difference, you know? There was also the issue with the jewelry turning people's skin green, because why wouldn't there be? Why wouldn't that be an issue? Why wouldn't there be a problem? Okay, Okay, let's talk about Cozy. I just want to say um, this brand in particular and all the brands I've spoken about, people have made better videos going into more detail about it, into like the legality of it and everything than this. So I would recommend, I'll leave some of my favorites in the description box. Cozy was launched about a year ago now from making this video. Um, and it's like a home lifestyle brand. So it was like cushions, throws, dressing gowns, expensive socks, things like that. So cozy, like a cozy home stuff. So in the launch video that is shown in her launch video of the brand, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty terrible in terms of the launch. Some very like, I guess like millennial style. We're having such a good time shots, you know? But also the music doesn't really go with the advert. I don't, I can't play it in this because of copyright reason, but it's like saying so cool, so fresh about cozy things. Like when do you put on a fro and like, oh, so cool, so fresh. Or some, you know, fluffy socks would be like, oh, co fresh, cool. You know, it's a very strange choice. The name Cozy, um, she stole from a smaller brand and brand owner, All Things Coz. Now this was spelt the same, pronounced different. And this was a brand by Kaylin Nicholson, who is a YouTuber, podcaster, all of that stuff. Uh, who started her brand in 2017, selling things similar, like mugs and stuff like that as well, like a lifestyle thing. Now, Jacqueline said in her brand reveal video, this is what gets me, right? Is that they spent ages trying to think of a name, trying to see what was taken and what wasn't. If you had Googled that name at that point, that would have been the only thing that came up with a smaller brand. So I don't believe that at all. Fact, I'm going to say it. Fact, they didn't look it up. This, of course, hurt Kaylin's brand pretty bad, the owner of Co was the original one. In many different ways, that whole Co situation was her her brand, not just her brand as in physical purchasing things, but her whole like YouTube brand and everything like that. But as as I mentioned, now if you Google Cozy or Co's, well, guess what's gonna come up? 
Jaclyn Hill drama videos talking about it, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, subreddits about it, people wanting the information and, and talking about what Jaclyn Hill had done to this brand. So now her smaller brand is drowned out by Jaclyn Hill's controversy with this brand. I actually think Kaylin dealt with this really, really, really well. She was, she seemed very calm and in the video she was kind of making it out like it was an opportunity for a refresh and a renew and she has since done something, like it released a video talking about the future of her brand for 2024. So I'm glad to see it's still moving on and, and doing whatever. But what gets to me as well is that Jaclyn Hill ruined this brand or almost did just to announce recently that she was shutting all her brands down, you know? Because her heart wasn't really in it. But you did this when your heart wasn't really in it and you shut down a smaller brand or you potentially could have ruined a smaller brand. And it, it seemed like for every single brand that Jaclyn Hill did, it was kind of a cash grab. And I'm not, I'm not like one for, oh, that's a cash grab. I, I actually hate that term because of course everyone wants money from what they're doing. A cash grab for me is when you know that the person who is talking about it isn't into it. They're just, their heart and soul isn't in it. That's a cash grab. And in Jaclyn Hill's case, I do feel like this was a cash grab. All the, all the like introductions to the videos, I was saying, I'm so excited. Oh, I, I used to live in a one bed flat and now I don't. It's like, okay. You know, something would then go wrong with a launch with a brand and you would never hear about it again. Now you have closed all your brands, Jacqueline. Please don't do another one. And if you do, don't let us know about it. And here's the deal as well. She she mentioned out, she mentioned in a video that she, there were people out there who like wanted her to stop doing these brands you know, wanted her to like, just stop coming up with new brands. And, and she was like, but I won't stop. The thing is, people wanted you to stop doing stupid things when these brands launched. They wanted you to handle it correctly. It wasn't that they didn't want you to be a success. I have to admit, every brand she bought out after the unsuccessful launch of another one, I was rooting for that brand to do well, except the cozy one. Because it was like, it can't be real that every brand she launches, something goes wrong. It was the issue of her stealing from people. That was the issue. You know what I mean? I mean, it wasn't that she had a brand, it was that all of them were morally incorrect, <laughs> or the way she dealt with something was incorrect. I did manage to catch a tiny bit of her video where she was talking about the brands, and she said she didn't want this, like, legacy of the hairy lipstick woman, the fro woman. Your legacy is now the hairy lipstick thing. Not because it happened, but because of the way you dealt with it initially. You can apologize for it all you want, but you left it years and years and years and years until you spoke the truth about it, about all the other brands. Your legacy is dishonesty, unfortunately. And that's just how I see it. Do I think that she can c come back from this? I actually think she can. I, she has a support system. She has um, a good following still. Why could she not? But maybe think it through and lead with honesty. And I'd love to know your opinions down below. Do consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.